Hello, and welcome to the first lesson of the first module of Computer Science 340. Today, we're basically going to be looking at what this class is going to be about and why it's important to study. So we're going to talk about what a data structure actually is and why it's important to learn about them. We'll talk about what algorithms are. You probably have a good sense already, but we're also going to talk about algorithm analysis, which is going to be a really important facet of this class. Then we'll talk about why these things are important to study and why they're important to being a good computer scientist. So let's take a look at that. All right, so here's the notes page for this first part of module one. In this, we're gonna talk about what data structures and algorithms are and how they work. So a data structure is basically a scheme for storing data in an organized way that allows it to be used efficiently. There's probably lots of definitions for data structure. This is the one that I came up with. I feel like it represents it pretty succinctly. So you have used one data structure extensively in your programming so far in 220 and 240, and that's the array or the array list. An array and an array list is exactly the same thing, in fact. An array list just gives you sort of extra methods that are handy, but the way that they work internally is exactly identical. In fact, pretty soon we're going to build up our own array list based on an array. Arrays are really good for many tasks. In fact, they're probably the most useful data structure, which is why they come built into Java and other languages by default because they're so useful and so good at so many things. But they're not good at everything. There's lots of tasks that arrays are actually pretty bad at. And unless you learn other data structures, you're going to use a tool for solving these problems, the array, which is actually not at all ideal. One of them is if you need to insert to and remove from the middle of the data. So let's take a look at why that is not ideal within an array. An array stores all of the elements in order in memory. So if we have an array of numbers, it might look like this. Let me speed this up just a bit. All right, so I've put some random numbers in the array so that I can illustrate this point. So if you want to insert something into the middle of this array for some reason, if the order of these things is important in any way, and we need their order to be a certain thing, and we want to insert something, let's say, between 82 and 50, there's not a good way to do that within an array. The only way to really do it is to, assuming you have space off the end of this thing, shift everything down by one. So 40 goes into this box, one goes into this box, 27 goes into this box, and so on and so forth. Everything shifting down by one cell to make room for your new number to be inserted in between 82 and 50. So that's not really very efficient. Having to move potentially half of the array in memory in order to insert one element in between is not good. Likewise, removing things in an array is not easy either. If we want to remove 45 from the array, there's a couple of ways we could do that. One is we could put like some dummy value, like negative one over top of the 45, and when we scan through it, know that, hey, negative one isn't a real number. It just means this thing has been deleted. That's one way to do it, but that's not really great because then you have all these gaps sort of in the array. There's no way in an array to actually like remove an element. You have to put something in there. So the other way to remove an element from an array is to move things back the other way and move the 36 on top of the 45 then move the 82 on top of the 36, and so on, shifting down the other way. So there's not really a good way to remove or insert into the middle of an array. That's one thing that is better done with a linked list, which is one of the early data structures we're going to look at and learn about. Other problems that you could use arrays for but are not actually ideal is keeping the data in a specific order based on when it was added to the structure. So there's some data structures, like the queue, which we're going to learn about, that keep the data basically sorted in the order that it was added into the structure. We'll look at that. We'll also look at keeping data in specific order based on the values of the elements. So if we want to store a bunch of things in a data structure and keep them sorted by value, you could do that with an array. Basically, every time you add something, put it into the correct spot but that's not really very efficient. There are ways to do that much quicker. Also, being able to search the data as efficiently as possible. There's a lot of data structures that are geared towards that that we'll look at. <clears throat> we'll also look at graphs, which store relationships between data elements. 
We'll look at storing data using as little memory space as possible, doing basic compression techniques basically, and also being able to test whether an element is in the data structure as quickly as possible, basically for a set. You know, you want to know, is the thing here or not? Which is actually sort of a different question, interestingly, than searching for it. So these are just some of the specialized kind of tasks that the data structures we're going to look at are meant to solve. So like I said, you could use arrays for solving all of these problems, but using the better data structure for the job is important for two reasons. First of all, it'll make your programs more efficient. Sometimes by a lot, this is really true. We'll look at some uh, examples of this later on in the semester where we will try to use something with sort of a naive, perhaps, uh, approach using an array or using another naive approach to solve a problem. And then when we use the correct data structure or the correct algorithm, it makes sometimes a tremendous difference in terms of how fast the program runs. And possibly more importantly, using the right data structures and the right tools to solve the problems you're given will make the program and the problem you're trying to solve more simpler and more straightforward and natural and elegant. And that's really important too. When you have sort of the right lens through which to view the problem, finding the solution is oftentimes much, much simpler and causes less pain and headache for you. So that's what a data structure is. An array is the first one that you've learned. We're going to learn more to solve more different and sometimes specialized problems. Next, we'll talk a little bit about algorithms. You've been writing algorithms since 220 and 240 or 110 if you took that here. But algorithms, we're going to study them in a little bit more detail in this class. An algorithm is a step-by-step -step procedure for solving some problem or accomplishing some task. We're going to look at algorithms for basically two different reasons. One is because in building the data structures that we need to study, we're going to have to deal with algorithms for doing things with the data structure. So basically, adding to an array is very simple. You just put it into the right slot with brackets because arrays are built into Java. But that's not true of the other data structures we're going to look at. Most of them are not built into Java. And so we're going to have to come up with our own schemes, our own algorithms for adding into the data structure, for removing from the data structure, for searching and looping through to go through each element in turn. All of these things, because the data structures we're looking at aren't built into Java, we're going to have to come up with algorithms for them ourselves. We'll also talk about algorithms that make use of the different data structures that we learn. So for example, when we learn about the graph data structure, we're going to look at some of the problems that graphs are really good at solving. So we'll look at algorithms like finding the shortest path between two elements in a set of data. We'll look at minimum spanning trees and other kinds of algorithms that make use of graphs. And likewise, when we talk about hash tables and stacks and queues and the other data structures that we get to, we're going to look at a couple of problems that make use of that data structure in an effective way and study those algorithms. Finally, we're going to talk about algorithms sort of independent of data structures. So it turns out that algorithms can be sort of grouped into different categories. So for example, there's um, greedy algorithms, which work a certain way. There's divide and conquer algorithms, which also work a certain way. And even things like dynamic programming, which we'll get to maybe later in the semester. These each sort of have different approaches in developing the algorithms. And if you can learn to sort of see these categories, you can be much better at solving problems and coming up with programs to solve these things. Lastly, we're gonna talk in this class about algorithm analysis. Algorithm analysis is the study of how efficient an algorithm is. So for example, in 220, you probably studied the searching algorithms, linear search and binary search. And to review real quickly, linear search is if you have an array of data, like this one perhaps, in linear search, what you do is you start at the very beginning of the data and you check if that one is the one you wanted. So we would look first at the seven and see, is this the thing we wanted? No, go on to 21, go on to 45, and scan through this entire array looking for the thing that we are looking for. Now in binary search, what you do instead is, first of all, the data has to be sorted. So let me do that real quick. In binary search, what you do, just as a quick refresher, is you start by looking in the middle of the data. 
and you will find that this value is 46. Now what you do next depends on whether what you're looking for is less than or greater than 46. So let's suppose we're looking for 31. We'd see that 46 is greater than 31, so we need to search in the left half of the array, knowing that it can't be over here. So again, we search in the middle, which let's say is this item, and we'll find that 29 is less than the thing we're looking for, 31, so we know it can't be in this array, uh, this part of the array rather. And we narrow down little by little until we find the thing that we're looking for. And in 220, you probably talked about how this is more efficient than linear search because you don't have to search every item. You only have to search some of them as you narrow down. But in this class, what we're going to talk about is how much more efficient is the binary search algorithm than linear search. Can we somehow categorize algorithms in terms of how efficient they are? Do we have to just run the program and see how many seconds it takes? Well, it turns out that there actually is a mathematical way of labeling algorithms by efficiency. And we will study this technique of analyzing algorithms, and we're going to apply it to a lot of the algorithms that we look at. So whenever we study an algorithm in this class, such as the algorithm to add into the middle of an array, or the algorithm to search for something in a hash table, or whatever algorithm we're looking at, we're going to talk about how efficient it is using this categorization. So we won't get to that right away. We'll talk about algorithm analysis in some detail, mostly towards the middle and end of the semester. So lastly, I'm going to leave you with a few thoughts on the importance of data structures. I have a few quotes from some famous programmers. First, Linus Torvalds, who invented Linux and also Git version control. He's quite a prolific programmer. And he says that I will claim, in fact, that the difference between a bad programmer and a good one is whether he or she considers his or her code or data structures more important. Bad programmers worry about the code. Good programmers worry about data structures and their relationships. And this is really true when you start thinking about a task that you need to solve or a program that you need to write. You don't jump in and start with the code and start with for loops and if statements and classes and methods and those things that you learned in 220 and 240. You should start thinking about what is the data that exists in this program? How is it transformed as the program is going to run along? What things do we need? What operations do we have on this data? And if you start thinking that way, it usually makes the coding a lot simpler. Likewise, a few more. Eric S. Raymond, who is another sort of open source programmer, said, smart data structures and dumb code works a lot better than the other way around. So if you are going to do one of these things well, it should be the way that you store and maintain the data. And lastly, Rob Pike, who worked on the Unix operating system and also the Go programming language, if you've heard of that says data dominates. If you've chosen the right data structures and organized things well, the algorithms will almost always be self-evident. Data structures, not algorithms, are essential to programming. So the goal of this course is to get you to be comfortable with looking at different data structures and choosing the best one for the task at hand. My hope is that this class will make you a much better programmer and make you more comfortable with these kinds of ideas. Just one last thought on this video, which is that last year I was at an Amazon higher ed summit where they were sort of talking about the opportunities that they had for computer science students and graduates. This was at their new HQ2 up in Northern Virginia, and they were talking about their interview process and they said, the thing that's important to us is data structures and algorithms. So that's what they are going to focus their interviews on. So make sure that your students know those topics well. So if you're applying for sort of maybe a, a really higher end or good job in computer science, this is the material really that people focus on because like these quotes elicit, this is one of the things that separates someone from being, you know, a coder who can do a task versus someone who's a computer scientist and really knows their stuff well. So I'm hoping this class is super helpful to y'all. So that's all for this video. Thanks.